Welcome to Parenting Mistakes. This is Dave speaking on behalf of Todd. This happens to be episode 48. Uh, we watched a show on Netflix, of course Netflix, um, called Dawn of the Croods, which is based on the motion picture The Croods. Uh, we recorded this episode on 118 or January 18th, 2016, and uh, we actually are trying to get some feedback from you. Uh, it's another more side business here. Uh, we'd like you to email us at parentingmistakes at hotmail.com. Please give us your feedback. More specifically, we are looking for you to tell us what you like and what you don't like. It's as simple as that, just the two questions. So you can email us once again at parentingmistakes at hotmail.com. You can also give us feedback at our uh, social media outlets, Twitter at Parent Mistakes, um, and uh, you can like us on Facebook at Parenting Mistakes. So, uh, actually said, uh, once again, glad to have you here, and uh, episode 48, wow, episode 48. Sit back and enjoy the show. So, I got another picture of your future. Awesome. Well, maybe not your future. What? Why do you... <laughs> Bait and switch, my friend. Bait and switch. Jeez. You know this. You know what's really hard about doing this podcast? Well, there's a lot of things that are hard. <laughs> yeah, tell me, tell me the ways, my friend. Well, we could do a long intro every time, explaining who we are, what we're doing, various bits and pieces. Sure. Right. Our names, our status in life, that sort of thing. Yeah. Actually, before we get to that, we have a piece of business. Yes, we do. We do which have a piece think, of business. Which I think you talked about. You talked about in the in the pre-show. In the pre-show, but I'm going to repeat it, folks out there. If you have listened to our podcast or you listen to our podcast regularly, we would like to get some feedback from you. Pure, Desperately, honest, no holds barred. Don't worry about offending us. Feedback. Yes. We want you to send an email to. Parenting mistakes, all one word, at hotmail.com and answer two simple questions. What do we do good and what do we do bad? The good right. stuff about the podcast, what we need to improve. Correct. Okay. Yes. So that's little business out of the way. So to remind people I'll just repeat the, the email address again. Although you'd all do, I'll put it in our, our blurb as well. There you go. Parenting yeah. mistakes at hotmail.com. Yeah. And I'll put it in the blurb. So just to remind people or to tell people for the first time, if this is the first time they're listening, welcome if you are. Mm. Dave has two kids, ages six and three still. I can't remember when uh, I've got a three-year-old that's going to be turning four next month. Woo. Woo. Okay, so six and three. I've got three kids, ages 17. She's going to be 18 in a few weeks. Holy smokes. I know, right? 17, 14, and 11. So my oldest, who was a senior in high school, we went to her end-of-year cross-country team banquet. Oh, yeah. On Friday night. Cross-country, that's a good sport. I know, right? Yeah. Which was a really nice night, and it's really interesting when you're in different phases of parenting. By the way, there's never gonna, there's not going to be a really good moral to this story here. I'm just going to be sharing. This is, this is one of your – and this is – so, this folks, this is one of our components. classic <laughs> – there is nothing for me to really – I well, I'll, well, we'll see how this goes. You keep okay. on going down this road. We'll see how this works. So you have different moments in parenting, and the old people always come up to you and tell you that life moves pretty fast, right? Yeah, absolutely. All the time. Every the day. Time, it's ridiculous. You know, old man, go away. Savor the moments and enjoy every moment. Yeah, and, and I say to them, what, what are you talking about? Right. And when you're a parent, I think particularly when the kids are younger. The kids are screaming at you. Right. What are you doing, Dad? Right. <laughs> sometimes parenting feels really slow. Those first yes. few days when you bring the baby home from the hospital, you haven't slept. Oh, my that word. Sort of thing. I'm a stay-at-home dad, and the right. first six months of me and Kayleen in the house were probably the longest six months of my entire life. Yes. I remember during nap time and staring at the ceiling because I didn't know what to do with myself. So I had sort of an interesting experience at this banquet. It was a very nice night, and we had a good time and celebrated the seniors, and I felt very good about being a parent and felt very proud of my daughter and the things that she's accomplished. But it was a strange experience because all of a sudden – 
halfway through her senior year, all of a sudden in my brain, all of a sudden I'm going, oh, this is the end. Well, it's the last time she'll do cross country in high school. Right. It's the last cross country banquet. It's the end every day. I know it's the end every day. <laughs> but it was just, it was it was different. It felt yeah. different. It was a milestone moment for you. It was a milestone yeah. moment. And, and because you're old enough, you could probably say it's a bucket list moment, right? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> no, I think a bucket list is something that you, you're you hoping to fulfill, right? Like, did you put it on your list, uh, um, Emma's uh, cross-country banquet, before you went? Because <laughs> then you could put it in your bucket list, right? Not specifically, Are no. you suggesting that maybe I should put Kayleen's cross-country final event on my list so I can put it in my bucket? Well, you could. I'll tell you what you can put on your bucket. Oh, and, go ahead. And the reason that... And, you know, shameless self-promotion here. And I'm, you know, you can take pride in your kids. But, like, my daughter is not the fastest cross-country runner. She never has been. That's not been her role. Um, She's battled, you know, injuries for four years. But she won the coach's award. And they give it to sort of a, you know, a person of character. And that's really what made that moment special. Sweet. Because you sit there and you go, okay, in the grand scheme of parenting, what do we really want? Do we want, like, the kid that's the star runner, or do we yes. want the kid that's a good kid? Yes. <laughs> anyway. But she'll take one. Right. So, it did occur to me, and, and the other thing that's connected to this is that both my wife and I are sort of feeling like we're running out of opportunities to do things as a family. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, Todd, I'm sorry. Because, and because you remember how we were in high school. Oh, sure. By the way, boys and girls, we, uh, Dave and I went to high school together, so we'd hung out a lot. When we were seniors, it's not like we were really itching for family time. No, not at all. We were like every moment we could just hanging out with the fellas. Oh, absolutely. Around. I mean, I yeah. knew that I knew the time was running short, but I wanted to hang out with my buds without a right. doubt. Like, right. Let's let's go for it, right? So, this is a not so awkward transition to our show. Oh, you got me. You, yes, you Suck got it. me. Oh, because my gosh. because this was the theme, one of the themes of the show. Yep. was the importance of family. Yep. And spending time together. Yep. So we watched Dawn of the Croods. Dawn of the Croods. Now, I'll tell you this right off the bat. I won't say I was cynical about this. I was preparing to be underwhelmed. Dawn of the Croods is a another Netflix original. Boy, Netflix has just taken over the world, aren't they? <laughs> Well, it's taken over for us. If we watch stuff on Hulu, we'd be saying Hulu takes over the world, right? Yes, this is but true. But I will say this. The making of the murder business, I'm sure. Have you watched that yet? I have not. Oh, my gosh. Well, it's on Netflix, and apparently everybody on the planet owns Netflix because they've all seen it. Okay. Uh, and I have seen it, and it's it's entertaining. I'll say that, but that's for okay. a different show. Well, maybe we should switch to like an adult's version of Parenting Mistakes. What call it call? Ad- adult mistakes. Oh, the- <laughs> anyway, Dawn of the Croods is a uh, series version of the DreamWorks movie of the same name. Well, not the same name, just the Croods. Yeah, the Croods. Which came out in 2013, which I did not see. Did you see it? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, or thumbs in the middle? Uh, Without a lot of detail, but just... it was a It was a DreamWorks animated movie? It, you know, it's it's always tough because DreamWorks is not Pixar, Correct. and they try a lot of different things that Pixar would never try in a million years. I yes. think Croods is one of those brands. Uh, was I entertained by the movie? Yes. Was okay. it a great movie? Eh, not so much. But it was a entertaining film, and the kids liked it. Okay. So we've seen this formula before from a business standpoint. You make a movie. You see how the movie does from a commercial standpoint. If it does reasonably well, then you put together a TV show or vice versa. So this is a – I don't want to say it's a spinoff. It's based on the movie. And the basic plot is that you have a – what do we want to call them? A cave family? Yeah, it's the Croods. They're a cave family. And this is actually a prequel to the movie. Okay, so this 
hence the dawn in the because there are things that happen in the movie where they couldn't be living where they are in the show okay and in this movie in the show they live in caves and they try to scratch out a living and they are constantly uh in danger from predators such as bear owls which are apparently a fairly sinister creature that they must face prehistoric animal that's out to get the crudes tell me if this is a proper analogy i felt like this was the flintstones meets land of the lost um you know i'll tell you i thought about mentioning the flintstones but i didn't think about the flintstones when watching it because I think it lacks any of the charm that the Flintstones has. Okay, I'm just talking in terms of the gen- the basic plot genre setting. No, you have a, and, and you, uh, have a, uh, you have a prehistoric time. No, because the Flintstones actually gives you like an idea that perhaps there was a period of caveman time in which they had rose to some sort of 60s technology, but they were doing it different. Okay, kind of like the world of Harry Potter. All Instead right. of technology, they got magic. The Flintstones had dinosaur disposals and stuff like that. They don't do that in the Croods. It's a very right. primitive. Well, I still felt a little bit like the Flintstones, and I felt like it was Land of the Lost because they're constantly being chased by something. Sure. So they don't go. have slee stacks, so there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you are utterly we are, frightening. We are, we are dating ourselves just a little bit. <laughs> yes. Okay. Your reaction, sir. I like where it ended up. So the basic premise of this show it was the first episode yes. of of a brand new series and it was the introduction of Graham who is yes. the grandma of the family who ends up being that classic nagging um, mother-in-law yes. that comes over and basically says I love you to everybody with the exception of the father of the house um, who she's like I can't remember she just mentions him by a different name what was right. his name like group his or name something? is Grug Grug, Grug. Grug. And she keeps on calling him something else just to annoy him. She does whatever it takes to annoy him. And right. he is just obviously annoyed by her, right? Right. But uh, the wife realizes, hey, Graham might be in a little bit of trouble because she's old out there, right? I did like that old folks gag where the old folks people – you go to the old folks island, right? Right. And there's this group of old folks on an island that animals are just picking off to eat. Yes. Right? Like, see you later, Henry, right? Um, it's kind of a hard joke to – to sell but regardless they're concerned that Graham might be having a hard time on her own and the truth is Graham doesn't really want to live with them personally but you know and that's that's the tension of the entire episode okay um, and I like I said I like where it went I don't like a show that doesn't follow its own rules and just to me it's just like I always find things disturbing so the littlest girl who is like what one years old maybe maybe two right, years old a is is a biter right and she in a big way up, by the way in a big way to the point where she's animalistic right? right like she just bites because it's in her nature and she's eating people she's she almost wants like to, a pet she's, she's almost, almost like, like a pet she, she could want, have been a, she could be a dog I think you're expressing my concerns with the show right now okay right there like let's just take primitive culture and go all the way and. To me, it just comes across as, yeah, it's a gimme joke, yet at the same time, part of me always is disturbed by family members that want to eat other family members. Well, okay. Right? There's a lot of disturbing behavior throughout the episode that I could, you know, the other thing too is that now they've got Graham in the house, they have another mouth to feed, he is actually a the husband of the house is a bonker who likes to go out and hunt with rocks, and you actually have two jobs with that. You have either bait or you're a bonker. Right. But because he has to earn more money now, he can become he has to become bait because as bait you earn more uh, loot or more gathering Something pieces like of that. meat. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. So he's regretting that he has to become or he's upset that he has to become bait and. I hate that gag. I've seen that gag a million times where pretty much the character who is the bait is just going to get beaten, eaten, killed. Who knows what's going to happen, you know, in some sort of animated comic fashion. It's just old, boring joke. 
That is, I find always disturbing. Okay, but I, I'm gonna. I'm not going to disagree with you on that, but I do think that you said it doesn't follow their own rules. The whole show is sort of unapologetically violent in terms of it, it has a it has a comfort level with any of these people could could get picked off at any point. Yes. So I think it is sort of consistent in that way. Now again, is that still a little disturbing because it's sort of like, oh hey, you know, our neighbors could get eaten by a bear owl at any point, and that's pretty funny. Right. Right. You are sort of telling kids, hey, you know, it was just sort of a goofball era back in the day, and people just got eaten. So, And that was just understood. So this is where I'm saying it doesn't follow its own rules, in that there there is this disregard for life, and yet at the same time they have all this concern for this old person and her life. But everybody else is just fodder. Right. In fact, he is willing to basically put himself in a position to sacrifice his own life for Graham's plot. Right. And that that stuff always bugs me. I'm like, no one cares about how anybody's living, but they care for this one character for plot's sake that she actually is cared for, who is, you know, a jerk anyway. Graham is just a jerk. Okay. Right? That's so fair. that that stuff bugs me. I'm like, it's just the inconsistency across the board. Now, sure. as a kid watching this, who cares? Right. Well, and the theme, again, we've talked about this before in terms of, we don't want to say adult content in terms of inappropriate, but adult themes. Like yes. if, you're a, if you're a parent watching this over the shoulder, you understand the sort of stereotype of the loathed mother-in-law. And this might actually might be your connection to the Flintstones. These type of issues came up on the Flintstones all the time. Right. Now – I think the other part, because there's there's the two parts, as as you said, there's the mother-in-law moving in, and there's the adjustment to the career. The other part of the plot is the teenage girl, mm -hmm. who is trying desperately to get into the in crowd. Who actually is a central figure to the the main movie as well. Right. I did think it was amusing that in this case, the in crowd was physically in a inner space <laughs> yeah like they were into this clump together and then they had these oh man what did they call them they actually had some good lines but they had like a ring of characters surrounding the inner crowd right that weren't in the inner crowd so the oh, idea is it's kind of yeah, the hunter gatherer the, they're they're rounding up the wagons with I actually wrote this down. I actually wrote this down because the girl says, excuse me, outcasts. Okay, there you go. When she sort of, like, they, they part the they part this red sea, and so she gets into the inner circle. By the way, I wrote down a couple other quotes, um, which I thought were funny. Which, again, it's funny to us. It is still not a regard for life. Teacher was eaten by his lesson. Right. So it's canceled. Okay. And then Graham, by the way, the sooner we get to your cave, the sooner I can start marking my territory. That's a little gruesome right there. Yeah. I don't need to know that. So I did find the sort of theme of the high school daughter wanting to get into the in crowd, sort of discovering that the in crowd is not really all it's cracked up to be. Yep. I did find that to be something that I appreciated. Sure, and it's better to be yourself yeah. than to now, try to... It's cliche, and they do wrap up with this nice, hey, isn't it great, and we all love our family, and we all are going to stick together, and this is the most important thing. That's what you want your kids to think, but realistically, just like I have a couple high schoolers, family time is not necessarily the priority. Right. They, want, they want to be with friends, and they want to be with friends that will accept them and appreciate them. You also, as a parent, want your kids to have good relationships with friends. Right. You want them to have – you want them to – I don't think you necessarily want them to be popular. I don't – I guess – I mean we could get into long sort of – I'll help uh, you out. You want them to be popular amongst their own group. You want them yeah. to be – you want you them to I be could... decent folk. Right. right. You and I could go down memory lane and we could talk about our own high school experiences because neither you nor I were in the quote-unquote cool group. That is true. 
Now we both we were in a small graduating class. You and I, and, and I've described this to people that I was in what I would describe as sort of the generic middle. Like there's cool kids, and then there's sort of the middle masses, and then there's a few sort of, to use a word from the show, outcasts. Right. That you know the people that struggled to find friendships just in general. Our story from high school is never been told. No one's ever done it. No, it's true. What happened for us was utterly bizarre. Why? Because because we actually, in junior high, had a big, popular group that was clearly popular. Right. And then by our freshman year, by our sophomore year, they were all gone. Yeah. And our group rose to be that group. I'm not saying we actually acted like the popular group, but our group filled that void. And I've never seen that on anything <laughs> This is true. It's, yeah, it was did a, really bizarre because suddenly all these folks that were kind of like above us or like looked down upon us, they were gone. Right. And suddenly we were the kings. It was weird. All right. So back to the crudes. Age. Give me an age. Uh, I definitely not recommend it. I would not recommend this show for my daughters. I definitely wouldn't. Okay. Uh, just because of the content, what's being said. Um, but – I know it's marketed to them in some capacity, yeah. and I can't say that the guy who's sitting in college who loves Tiny Toons or Teen Titans Go, right, let's go with that, is going to find this show appealing. So I'm like, right. wow, this is kind of a bummer because I'm not sure where this show sits. Right. And, you know, we, we've we talked off and on about artistry and animation, uh, that sort of thing. Let the me way, say yep. this. Let me say one more thing. Uh-oh. But better, better than anything on Disney XD. How about that? Uh, okay. Well, yeah. I haven't watched it. So far, so far, so far, the, okay. the stuff that we've watched. Yeah, I'd say the way that it is animated, the way it's drawn. Yeah, it it is. It looks on the surface like a kids show, ages what seven to ten. Yep. Something like that. Mm-hmm. So, I think I do think the writing is fairly clever, but that is sort of a double-edged sword that parents have to be wary of. Sure. That even though a lot of things do go over kids' heads, it doesn't mean that it's all going to go over their heads. And some of that does get infused. And again, that's where kids pick up phrases, they pick up words, they pick up little sort of nuances of things. That they read things and hear things and well, let me Okay, let me help you out a little bit. So to tie up this show... Every single character at the end of that show, and this was well written, realized, and this is an important message for the crudes, that it's actually great to be a crude. Yes. Despite all of our obstacles, all the things in front of us, all of our hang-ups about each other, at the end of the day, it's great to be us. Yes. And the truth is, is that once we're together, the... the the community realizes that, wow, the crudes are actually pretty dang cool. Right. Right? It's great to kind of be them. So the writers actually managed to string in a bunch of subplots into one harmonious message that I thought, I'm not – and that's the best part. Right? I mean I can't knock it. I thought right. this, is, this is a good thing to be saying uh, in any show. Right. So, and when you – because when you look at your family, I look at mine, you look at yours – Right, and every yeah. thread it's, it's what was, it is. As far as writing was concerned, every thread was completely tied up at the Very end. Very true. And All right. I, I'm saying I guess in twenty two minutes that's quite a bit of show. I think you have twenty four minutes, but there's a lot going on for sure. This is true. Um Yeah, it might be one of those shows that we want to get back to again. See where yeah. they've gone. For yeah. sure. But you know, this is one of those ones where you sort of say, hmm. Parents got to be a little careful with this. Yeah. Well, there's lots of things going on, and like I said, some of the disturbing behavior I could care less for. I already have kids that bite kids in my house, <laughs> right? I don't right. need to encourage that behavior whatsoever. Right. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. All right. You can uh, like us on Facebook, uh, Parenting Mistakes. You can follow us on Twitter, Parent Mistakes. And a reminder, if you could uh, send us a little email. Parenting mistakes at hotmail.com. What we do well, what we need to work on. Yes. Other than that, it's good to be us.